Many didn't believe it, as neither. But Tesla full self-driving is really starting, and it cannot be overstated how important that is. So what does it mean for the other car makers? Hint, nothing good. Then let's also talk about the electric GMC Hummer. Is it any good? Then the IEA released a report saying that renewables are rising much faster than thought. On the topic of Giga Berlin, Elon fires the Giga Berlin project leader. And still on the topic of Germany, let's rant about overzealous data protection activists which try to limit Tesla's sentry mode. And while already in rant mode, why not also rant about the backwarded legislation of the European Union with regard to full self-driving? A lot to rant, I mean a lot to talk about, so stay tuned. Okay, so it really has happened. Many thought that when Elon said it on Tesla Autonomy Day in April 2019, that Tesla would release full self-driving capability by the end of 2020, that this was just another classic case of Elon time. And we have to admit, we also did. Yet here we are, now towards the end of 2020. And lo and behold, Tesla is really releasing FSD capability. But as of now, only to a small set of selected customers. FSD is still being in early beta stage. Nonetheless, Tesla really is releasing this extremely important update as promised. So what are the capabilities of this FSD beta release? Well, fortunately, lots of people have uploaded videos on YouTube showing the FSD beta in action. Some people took it to the extreme, as for example Tesla Chino here testing it at night during rain. And yet still, the system seems to be doing pretty fine. Link to his full video in the description, of course. Now sure, the system isn't perfect yet. Sometimes an intervention is still necessary. But we know that the FSD system keeps improving and keeps learning from the collected data using the Tesla AI neural net. But already now, the FSD system can basically drive you autonomously from any point A to any point B, no matter if within a city or in a remote rural area. It just drives you there, reading traffic lights, displaying on the left side of the screens all objects which it is able to detect. Cyclists, pedestrians, trucks, buses, speed bumps, pylons, road signs, traffic lights, and many other objects. From what we've seen, and we've watched many, many FSD videos because we are utterly fascinated by them, it looks like with some more improvements, the system will be ready for prime time sometime in the next year. As the Tesla AI neural net keeps learning and improving with all the collected data, so does the error quota decrease more and more, until the point will have come where FSD will be far safer than a human driver. So what does this mean now for the future? Before we answer that question, please consider subscribing to our channel, as we are one of the few channels on YouTube that not only talk about spaceflight technologies, but also other disruptive technologies. And from now on, you can even vote for the topic of each Wednesday's disruption report. So be sure to check out our channel homepage. And thank you very much for your support. Back on topic, the legacy car makers find themselves yet in another area where Tesla is again years ahead in front of them. Years! Let's take Waymo as an example, probably the only other company that currently has full self-driving capability. They have just recently opened their full self-driving service in Phoenix, Arizona. Now in contrast to Tesla, they are using LiDAR which means that a device is mounted on top of the Waymo driverless car, which sends out low-energy laser light in a continuously rotating 360-degree sweep. This laser light then gets reflected by surrounding objects and is then detected by sensors built into the LiDAR system. Now the problem with this approach is that in order to function well, the area needs to be mapped beforehand. So you couldn't just take one of the self-driving Chrysler Pacificas from Phoenix and let them drive for example in Chicago or in some rural area. It wouldn't work. 
Now Tesla is superior to this system because it is entirely based on vision. So it doesn't need to send out rays of light and it entirely uses an AI system which acts based on experience. So the same way our eyes and brains work. Other car makers are even further behind Waymo. They have been testing full self-driving systems for years and years and years. And they aren't getting further ahead because they just don't have the necessary amount of data to train their AI pattern recognition systems. Or they make the same mistake and try to use LiDAR, the same way Waymo does. GM's Cruise uses a LiDAR system, Ford uses LiDAR, and so on. The list is long. All are on the wrong path. So what does that now mean for legacy auto? Well, you guessed it, nothing good. Tesla will basically be able to release their self-driving robot taxi service, probably already next year. And Tesla cars will then be able to drive themselves anywhere in the US where legislation allows it. Such as for example in Nevada, a state which is really far ahead with regard to self-driving legislation and has allowed self-driving cars already since 2017. We really love Nevada. So while all other car makers and self-driving services are limited to small trial runs in some very select areas such as Waymo in Phoenix or GM's Cruise in San Francisco, Tesla can launch their robo-taxi service in the entire US where legislation allows it. So again, apparently everyone has underestimated Tesla and has slept for too long. Tesla will have an ever-expanding fleet of FSD-capable cars on the roads, which of course will generate an insane amount of revenue for Tesla, thus making them even more powerful, thus increasing their lead with regards to other car makers even more. The price of full self-driving has already increased by another $2,000 and Tesla will launch it also as a subscription-based service. So you can imagine what a total cash cow this will be. So we'd say it again doesn't look very good for legacy car makers. Meanwhile, GMC showed its all-electric Hummer in a move to also get into the heating up electric pickup truck game. We already had Tesla with the legendary Cybertruck. We had Rivian with their more conventional but still cool R1T or Lordstown Motors with their Endurance or Ford with their all-electric F-150. Now apparently, GM also wants a piece of the pie. So they introduced the GMC Hummer. It's a huge beast. But there are some major problems, namely price, range and availability. So you will initially only be able to buy the most expensive Hummer which will launch in fall 2021 for a really relaxed $112,595. But hey, the range for that insane price is certainly at least 500 miles, right? Because come on, this beast will have a 200 kilowatt hour Altium battery inside. Nope, 350 miles of range, 350. Compare that to Tesla's Cybertruck where the most expensive version will cost 70k and offer a 500 mile range. And suddenly you don't feel so excited anymore about the Hummer. To make it even better, the cheaper versions of the GMC Hummer will come out successively in 2022, 2023. And yes, the cheapest one only in 2024. It will start at $80,000 and have 250 miles of range. In 2024, 250 miles of range. In 2024, this is really hilarious. In 2024, the Tesla Cybertruck will probably already offer 600 miles of range for only 70k. So yeah, the GMC Hummer is really a bit disappointing, we have to say. But still, there certainly will be some people who will buy this truck like five or six diehard GMC fans. All the others will buy Cybertrucks or Rivians. Gigafactory construction is continuing with insane speeds at Giga Texas in Austin, where it seems more and more realistic that it will be finished by summer 2021, so that the first Cybertrucks can really be delivered by fall next year. 
At Giga Berlin, everything is also progressing nicely, but Elon apparently still wasn't too satisfied and fired the Giga Berlin project leader Ivan Horetsky. Now, we don't know if that has something to do with the water bill incident from almost two weeks ago, but we have to say that's not cool. We all know Elon is a genius and he's super important for the advancement of humanity, but we have to say that sometimes the way Elon treats his employees is uh, a bit brutal. The fact that Giga Berlin was progressing so fast in Germany was nothing short of a miracle, so we really don't understand that decision. What we also don't understand is Germany's overzealous stance on data protection. Yes, of course, data protection is important, but now Thilo Weichert, a German data protection representative, released a report stating that the Tesla Sentry mode and the Tesla data collection in general violates German and European law and urges the European Union to limit these features. Data protection is important, but until a certain point. If you go too far, you will stifle innovation. And this is exactly the reason why big software and internet companies are not from Germany. Germany was once a hub of innovation in the late 19th and early 20th century. But now, innovation is stifled here and in Europe in general, with absolutely innovation adverse laws. And then the idiotic German government wonders why no innovative startups have come from Germany in the last decades. Amazon, Google, Apple, Tesla, all American companies. Hmm, we wonder why they aren't German companies. And this problem continues with full self-driving legislation. We here in Europe are the idiots watching our American friends having fun with full self-driving features. When probably in Europe, FSD will be legalized in 5 years earliest, in Germany in 10 years, and in Bavaria in 20 years. Hulk does like that. Hulk has to move out of Bavaria. So no thanks, we really want to live in an innovation-friendly environment. We apologize for the rant, but this topic really makes us angry and also very sad. So then let's not end this episode on a down note, but on some really excellent news. The mainstream media wants to convince us that all is doom and gloom and everything is so bad. And insanely awful shows like Star Trek Picard want to tell us that the future is dark, hopeless and bleak. When in fact, the International Energy Association IEA, says that solar has become so cheap now that they had to correct their scenario for 2040 upwards by 43%. Meaning that worldwide there will be 43% more solar power in 2040 than anticipated back in 2018. Because solar power is 20 to 50% cheaper than had been thought only two years ago. But the price keeps dropping and dropping and the cost per megawatt is now below fossil fuels for the first time ever. So the main driver of renewable energy adoption is actually the very low price which just continues to keep dropping. Thus it just doesn't make any economic sense anymore to build fossil fuel based power plants. This is really good news as it would mean that we actually might be able to get completely rid of fossil fuels sooner than we would have expected. And Tesla is not only far ahead regarding full self-driving, but of course also with their insane pricing strategy we talked about it in last week's video, which you can watch right here. So thanks for watching the JS Disruption Report and I would say on to the future. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. The outro now. Um, wow, you fan. Look! <laughs>